Hey everybody, Covert Prepper here. I wanted to talk a little bit today about a new project that I'm working on, uh, tell you guys a little bit about it, uh, how I'm gonna be doing it, and uh, the, the process I'm gonna be doing to build this new um, system that I have. So what I'm gonna be doing is creating an off-grid uh, solar charging system. Uh, I've never done anything like this before, so it's gonna definitely be a learning experience. I'm certainly not an expert in electricity or anything, but I've been kinda going down the rabbit hole a little bit on you know, so, uh, solar panels, uh, charging components, batteries, charge controllers, all those sorts of things. My goal is to put together uh, an off-grid solar system that just a small one that will be able to run a few devices. And primarily what I'd like to be able to do is run a deep freezer off-grid 100% of the time. So if there was ever any kind of power outage or disruption in service, uh, I wouldn't even have to go flip a switch or do anything because the, the my deep freezer would be off the grid 100% of the time. So that would mean uh, solar and batteries for at night and, and doing all that. So I, I bought a few items. Uh, I have a few of them already in my position. A few others are going to be coming uh, soon down the road. Uh, but I'll, I'll kind of go through and show you guys some of what I have. And, and uh, feel free to post some feedback in, in, in the comments below if you have any experience doing this or if you have any questions or, or, or comments or feedback or, or tips and suggestions. So I'm, I'm definitely open for that. So what I did is I bought some solar panels. I bought uh, six 250-watt solar panels. I got them really cheap. They were used. I found some on eBay for like if my math is correct, I think it's like 20 cents a watt, super crazy good price. So I'm going to be using those and mounting them up above, above over my patio. And I'll show you that here in a moment where I'm going to be going out and, and uh, uh, installing them. So I'll be doing that. And then I also pre-ordered one of the Energy Flex systems. That's the, with the battery and the inverter and the charge controller all kind of in one. So if you're into kind of the, 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 the prepping world at all, you're probably familiar with the energy already. They came out with their Kodiak system several years back and then and then up and then the, the second model that they came out with was the, the Apex. You probably heard about those. Uh, like I said, if you've done any research on these sorts of things, they're very popular in that in that uh, in this kind of in this sphere. So uh, I've never used one, and uh, this is uh, my first time go getting into this sort of thing. So I I, I hope it it works out well for what I'm trying to do. Uh, but uh, they, they're they taking pre-orders for those right now. They're going to be shipping, I believe, in October. So when I get that, I'll, I'll, I'll show you what, what I'm doing here and and, uh, uh, and how it all snaps together and everything. I'm going to need to wire it all up, which is going to be a new experience for me. Uh, but I just feel like uh, having some sort of power is going to be pretty, pretty crucial in any kind of disaster situation. So obviously talking about priorities when you're thinking about prepping for any kind of disaster priorities are are uh, something that you need to be thinking about what's number one priority what's number two what's number three so on and so forth so uh, number one I think has got to be uh, some way some, some sort of uh, way to drink clean water uh, if not number one it's got to be way high up on the list um, we all know that you can't live very long without water so some sort of uh, water uh, storage rainwater collection, uh, bottled water, water filtration, or all of the above. I'm gonna be working on some water uh, systems here coming up shortly. I already have started on a couple when I get finished or as I, I've been recording some footage on that, so I'll post some of those in, uh, at a later time. But um, <clears throat> water's huge. One, number one, if not number one, it's way up near at the top. If, if you can think of something that's more important than water, hit me up in the comments and let me know because I can't really think of anything. Maybe it's due to the fact that I live in the desert, I'm in Arizona, so <laughs> water is top of mind for me. But uh, um, if you can think of something else, let me know. Uh, of course, food is huge. You got food, water, medical supplies, some basic security, uh, some way to defend yourself in case there's some sort of violence. Uh, heaven forbid that hopefully that doesn't happen, but it, it, in, a, in any kind of disaster situation, it very well could. So having some, some basic things thought out and some preparedness for that are super crucial. However, electricity <clears throat> is the thing that's going to separate a civilized person from the cavemen, right? I mean, that's what keeps us going. That's what keeps us in our modern world. We have uh, modern conveniences. We cook with it. We clean with it. We, we, you know, use electricity for everything. They power our devices. That's how we communicate with one with another. So having some way, even if it's just a very small solar uh, panel and a, a little battery that you can charge up uh, with the solar uh, would be huge. And solar technology has come along so far that it's really easy to charge up small devices, at least with solar, uh, pretty easily. And even if you want to go with some bigger things. My big concern here living in Arizona is uh, the ability to find some way to keep cool because it's so brutally hot in the summertime if we had a power outage in the summer. And the problem with that is air conditionings and any kind of cooling systems are huge, huge power draws. 
So being able to run some kind of coolant system, cooling system is going to be something that's going to be a major focus of mine going forward and kind of seeing what I can come up with. Uh, fortunately, here in Arizona, it's very dry, so uh, evaporative coolers work well. If you're not familiar with those, uh, like also called swamp coolers, they're just basically just a big, you know, uh, absorbent pad where water's dripped down and then a big fan blowing water through them. And those work well when it's very dry. If it's humid, it doesn't work so well, but fortunately here we don't have very many days of humidity. So that may be something I want to do because they use far less energy than a traditional air conditioner with, uh, you know, say, you know, coolant and, and a compressor and all of that sort of thing. So that may be something I want to do. So anyway, uh, this solar system that I'm going to be building is going to be able to, to, to be expanded. I can expand with more batteries. I can put more panels up, that sort of thing. But I should have a pretty good, a pretty solid um, start in October when all my, my, my gear gets here. But I've started with the panels. So uh, let me show you what okay, I got. Folks. So here's what I got. Um, I got several of these panels. These are 250 watt panels. Um, I got six of them. I found a good deal on, on eBay. They are um, the, uh, what brand are they? Trina, Trina Solar. So I've heard of that brand before. Um, I don't know a ton, a ton about them, but I've, I mean, they seem like uh, fairly, fairly decent panels. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be mounting these up over my rear patio. I'll show you here in a moment where I'm gonna be mounting them. I'm not doing a grid tie or a, you know, a, a net metering with the electric company or anything like that. This is just gonna be a pure, off-grid system. I know if you do the full solar system with the electric company and all of that, you're going to need to do, you know, get an electrician, a qualified electrician to, to install it. You'll probably have to, you know, get permits with the city and all that. So I'm not doing anything like that. This is just going to be runoff batteries uh, and it's just going to be 100% off-grid all the time. And I'm going to hopefully run my, my little, uh, here, I'll show you, run my, hopefully going to be running my this guy, my deep freeze off of it and use that 100% of the time. So I'll be able to, to not have to worry about any interruption in power. So we obviously have um, some food storage, canned goods, that sort of thing, but being able to keep some, some meat frozen, I just feel like that'd be a really helpful thing to do in any kind of long-term power outage or anything like that. So that's my goal and that's kind of my plan there. Uh, and let me show you where I'm going to be installing. So this is the place I have that I'm going to be putting it up. Flip this camera around. So right up here, this pergola that I have over the over the patio, right up there is where I'm going to be mounting the solar panels. And I think it's going to work out well because um, unlike mounting it to like the roof or something where you're going to have to remove shingles or in my case, um, those roof tiles and drill into the roof and get it sealed and all that. I mean, I'm not a roofer, so rather than having to do that, I would just have to drill right into these, you know, wooden beams and put a little sealant on there. It shouldn't be too hard to do. And then what I'll need to do, let me see if I can um, get it so you can see it, but right over here along the sides of the wall right here, um, I'll just run a conduit down there and then around that corner and then I could just punch through the wall and then that'll be right into the room where the uh, the um, uh, deep freeze is, and then I should be able to power it there. Put my put my inverter and charge controller there. So, so anyway, that's my plan. Um, main reasons for doing that are going to be, uh, like I had mentioned before, in a power outage situation, having some food preservation. Um, but one of the reasons I wanted to do it completely off grid was so that not only so that uh, for convenience so I didn't have to flip a switch or anything if I did lose power but secondly if there was any kind of power surge through the grid or anything that could cause an issue um, thinking like you know some sort of Carrington event or coronal mass ejection for those of you who aren't familiar with that it's just a big giant solar flare that could potentially cause problems with an electrical grid basically the whole grid everything connected to the grid becomes like a giant magnifying antenna for these these uh radiation that comes through and can fry a whole bunch of stuff. So I should look up Carrington event if you're not familiar with it, but uh, anything that's plugged into the grid w could potentially uh, be at risk. So be being able to have something like a freezer, even maybe a couple other things that are important, taken off the grid, unplugged, uh, certain things like my ham radio and things like that, I keep unplugged anyway, just for that reason, but things that you don't wanna keep unplugged all the time, like a freezer, uh, being able to keep it in an off-grid, completely self-contained system. If there were any ever any kind of uh, system like uh, problem like that with the grid, uh, it would it would hopefully avoid that problem. So that's kind of my thinking behind that. And then also just being like as I mentioned, just convenience, not having to switch it back and forth. If I lose power in the middle, if I lose power in the middle of the night, 
I don't have to worry about it. Uh, I know that it's taken care of. So I will um, go ahead and make another video once I get all my equipment and putting everything together. If you guys would find that interesting, uh, let me know in the comments or, or, or throw a like on the, on the video so I'll know that that's something that would be of interest. I'll, I can show step by step of how I wire it all together and how I do everything, I install the panels and all that. So um, I've got a couple other videos coming soon, so stay tuned for that and I will see you guys next time.